Hey YouTube! So our project is going to be a little bit different today. You can see I've got a standard wall mounted television. What we're going to do is make a frame for that television, much like this one. Just like that. But because it is football season, we're going to be doing it instead right here in the man cave. We're going to be doing with this TV and it's going to get a little bit more of a rustic frame. I think it's really going to bring the room together and I hope you'll join me. I initially wanted to use fence board but I found a pallet out in the woods so my materials were free. Disassembly took a bit longer than expected. The wood was brittle having been exposed to the elements for so long so after a few broken pieces I slowed down a bit. I determined the most practical use of the piece by holding each board up to see where it would fit, and then I marked the back of each piece. So I'm going to use this one for the top. I like the fit of that. This one for the bottom because it fits over the entire surface area, nothing showing from the bottom. This one is going to be used for this side. We use this just to separate or to have something on the side here. This one, like this, again, to have something nice for the side. Because I knew I had enough material, I wanted the frame to overlap the bezel of the TV entirely so that the viewer would only see the picture. I therefore measured the inside edge of the bezel for my cuts. After cutting each piece, I took it to the TV to make sure I had the appropriate dimensions. Once I had all four pieces cut out, I arranged them on the ground to make sure they fit properly. Because the bottom piece of the frame was so wide, I decided I wanted the remaining three pieces of the face a bit wider so I needed some 1x2s as spacers. Despite the 1x2s, I still needed to trim a bit of the frame so that it would sit flush with the depth pieces. I started by assembling the depth pieces with the 1x2 spacers. This gave me a bit of surface area to mount the face pieces to. I used wood glue and one inch brads for almost the entire assembly. Once I had the sides built, I started assembling the top. I used small pieces in the upper corners as opposed to an entire piece spanning from side to side. The small pieces serve the same function in providing support to the corner of the frame, but cut down on excess weight and allow me to use less material. So I made the cutout in the top, 
so that the remote control can still see the Apple TV as it sits back here. Don't want the IR signal to get covered by a piece of wood. So I cut that out so that's open. I had the sides and the top put together, but there was still one more thing I needed to do before I could complete the frame. The board that I used for the bottom piece was fairly warped, so I wet it and I put it under the heaviest thing in my garage, my lathe, and I waited for it to dry overnight. It turns out that worked out very nicely. I had a very straight board the next day, although it did have some curve to it, but no project is perfect. The other challenge is that the board, the bottom piece, is going to be sitting right there and covering the IR input here. So we're going to need to do something in order to allow that IR signal to still be received. So now we just have to mark that position on the back of this board. Marking the center of the board first. And then I'll measure one inch actually over in this direction for the IR receiver. So what I've done is I've marked the center where the power button is, right there, measured one inch over and two and an eighth inches down, should be exactly where our IR receiver is. And I'm going to go check that right now before I actually drill. You see that I'm starting out with a large bit. Uh, the reason being is I'm going to put a hole, a larger hole in the back of it and then drill a tiny hole in the front. And what that will do is hopefully from any angle that I'm using the remote, it will go through and be able, you know, through one tiny hole coming out in a large hole. I have no idea if this is going to work, but hopefully it will. There it is, a nice hole. Now we're going to drill the rest of that hole out with a smaller bit. There we go, tiny hole, large opening in the back. I finished off the hole with a tapered router bit to make the hole a bit more cone shaped. Beautiful. The only thing left to do now is put this thing together. I'm going to start with the feet at the bottom. Then I'm going to put these down, and I didn't complete the bottom because the speakers on the TV are at the bottom. I want to be able to hear all that sound. Now because the wood was old and warped, I did have to use a lot of clamps and a few screws just to get my seams to match up a bit better.
Once complete, I finish the surface by sanding and setting all the brads. I hung the frame and added a few shims at the top to make sure that it fit properly. And once I was satisfied, I tested out the operation. Not bad. Oh no, I thought this was a great project. It was fun, cheap, and pretty easy. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.